uh, sa pagkakataong ito, uh, tatalakayin natin, alam naman, sa social media, ang bigla ang uh, sakit ni Dr. Uh, Willie Ong. Pero saan niya nakuha yan? Galing daw umano, sabi niya, sa... Uh, galing daw umano sa mga negative comments sa social media. Uh, so, nanawagan siya kung maari uh, ipanalangin siya para sa kanyang recovery. Pero sabi niya, para mamamatay na daw siya. Filipinos, love and cherish each other. Pray to the Blessed Virgin Mary. Pray to Padre Pio. Pray to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's like a spirit came here, all over here. Marami ako napapanitin ni Pangkasing. All my 60 years old, I serve Filipino people. Lahat ng charity, all my charity work in Salamat, Dok. In Makabayan Doctor, in doing charity work in Pasay, Philippines, you no know, Chinese for 25 years, we always give it to the Filipinos. If we, if I do not put out this video, I will just die. The news will be, Doc really died one day. He did not tell his followers. Yon ang uh, uh, pahayan niya na nanawagan siya kung maari uh, ipanalangin. Umano siya. So, uh, dito makita natin ang kanyang kalagayan na namamayat ka talaga. Uh, kumpara nitong isang video na napakita siya kaugnay sa kanyang karamdaman. Ito, uh, kilalang kilala si Dr. Uh, Willie Ong sa social media. If you pray for me, I think I will get well. If you keep on bashing me, I think I will die. I think I got all this pain from negative thoughts, negative emotion, from all the hurt, from all the bashing I got from the 2022 vice presidential campaign. I got so many bashing. I just ran for vice president. What did I do wrong? I did not do anything wrong. I love every one of you. Uh, only God reaches the hearts of people. And therefore, he knows which suffering is truly really meritorious and which suffering is not meritorious. So what are the different, I would like to point, what are the different intentions of why we should suffer or carry our cross? and how to make it make sure that this crosses attain its full potential. First and foremost, we suffer and carry our crosses to share in the redemptive work of Jesus. As an author states, the Christian is not only one of the redeemed, but also a redeemer of his brethren. That means our suffering can is offered to and for the sake of people around us. So, bawat Kasakitan sa ating buhay ay may purpose. Pero, kaya nga, sa prayer natin na Anima Christi, kung naalala niyo, suffer me not to be separated from you. Sabi ni Father Sikia, makita ng Diyos kung kaninong suffering ang meritorious in the eyes of God. Paano magiging meritorious? In the eyes of God, kahit ang ating kasakitan, if we are in the state of grace. Dahil alam naman natin na ang Diyos ay nasa supernatural world. Tayo'y nasa natural world. So, kung maalala natin, tinalakay ni Father Darwin, binanggit ni Father Darwin, ilang minuto na mapigilan natin ang ating hininga sa ilalim ng tubig. Siguro, malayo rin 10 minutes. Dahil, natural lang ang ating paghinga at nangangailangan tayo ng supernatural na bagay 
para mananatili tayo sa ilalim ng tubig. Ganon din tayong mga tao nandito sa mundo na nasa tinatawag na natural world. Samantalang ang Diyos ay nasa supernatural world, nangangailangan talaga tayo ng supernatural a gift at yan ay ang sanctifying grace. All our good actions, even our sufferings, can be meritorious in the eyes of God if we are in the state of grace. Eh, ito, balikan natin si uh, Dr. Willie na viral uh, ito dahil may sundo na daw siya. Wow. Sakit niya. Sakit niya. Sakit ang buko na. I check my WBC. Sabi niya, Paano ka na buhay? Your WBC is zero. If, it, if I do not put out this video, I will just die. The news will be, Doc really died one day. He did not tell his followers. He lied to his followers. I owe it to the Filipino people to be honest to them. I owe it. Mahal na 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 mahal ko kayo po lahat. I think I got all this pain from negative thoughts, negative emotion. From all the hurt, from all the bashing I got from the 2022 vice presidential campaign. I got so many. Pwede ang mga negative comments na magiging curses and spells. Kaya sa mga nagsubaybay ngayon, Ugaliin din natin na maliban na pagsikap yan nating mamumuhay tayo sa tinatawag na sanctifying grace, break all courses and spells. Sa Philippine National Association of Catholic Exorcists na tinatawag Pache, nakaugalian na na pag may annual gathering, hindi yan ipo sa social media. At lahat ng mga parti participants, pinagbabawalan talaga. Pinagbabawalan talaga na ipos yung mga video kayay picture habang ongoing pa. Kailangan uh, mapost yun sa social media, tapos na. Bakit? Dahil maliban sa mga negative comments na ipapadala, may mga grupo na mga witchcrafts o mano at mga satanism ang magpapadala ng courses and spells at may pagkakataon na na ang speaker mismo kahit nasa estado ng grasya ay apiktadong apiktado sa courses and spells at nadala pa sa ospital at nagsagawa pa ng solemn exorcism. So, totoo na nasa digma ang spiritual tayo. No? Uh, may conference na inatinan ko sa Pachi doon sa, sa Cebu City. E, na-violate ko yung role. Nag-post ako ng picture pagpasok namin. Pero, di naman yung... Uh, uh, wala namang a conference na kalagay basta picture lang nakarating kami sa Cebu. Alam niyo? Grabe. Ang nararamdaman ko. Sumakit na sumakit sa buong uh, buhay ko. Grabe. 'Yon ang uh, unang pagkakataon na nararamdaman ko ang sakit ng tiyan ko. Kasama pa ang grabing lagnat. Kaya nanatili na lang ako sa kondo habang sila si uh, doktor at mga kasama sila si Father Darwin ay nasa conference. Pinuntahan pa talaga ako ni Father Darwin sa kondo at nagsagawa ng exorcism. Oh. So, kaya at ito din ang pangyayari mga kapatid. Nung nagsama kami ni Father Darwin sa lawag, diocese of lawag, para magsagawa ng seminar sa 
parokya ni Father Danilo Divaras na exorcist sa Lawag Diocese. Alam nyo? Ano nangyari? Biglang na walang kuryente ang simbahan at kumbiento. Ngunit sa paligid, mayroong kuryente. Maliban lang sa kumbiento, rektore, at sa uh, simbahan. Yun ang pangyayari. Nang nagbalik ako, bago lang uh, ako nagbalik doon. Si, at hindi pala, uh, kinuha yung generator, pinaandar, umandar, giba agad. Kaya nung nagbalik ako sa parokya ni Father uh, Danilo Divaras last week, sabi niya, Brother, mag-deliverance ka sa buong area sa simbahan. Baka mangyari na naman yung nangyari sa pagpunta ninyo ni Father Darwin. Sabi ko, ikaw na lang, Father. Ikaw, Paris Press, exorcist ka. Ikaw na lang to establish a parameter of protection around this area. So, nag-usap kami. Sabi ko, baka mabalik yung nangyari noong nakalipas na taon. Pasok ako sa simbahan. Alam nyo? Biglang namatay ang kuryente. Kaya, lumabas ako. Sabi ko, Father, naunahan tayo. Sabi niya, oo nga. Inilabas na naman ang generator. Pinaandar. Giba na naman ang generator, sabi nila. Bakit ganon? Sa usaping spiritual warfare, pati generator, giba. Kaya, nang nagsagawa na si Father Danny Divaras ng uh, prayer for protection sa loob ng simbahan at to establish a perimeter of protection, alam nyo, bumalik ang kuryente. No, oh, so ito talaga ang spiritual na digmaan mga kapatid, real. Pero the almost forgotten ministry dahil dami na ang di naniniwala nito. Ngayon, sa ating panahon ngayon, marami sa atin na takot sa suffering. No? Sino ba ang di matakot ng suffering? Dahil gusto natin yung kultura na iniiwasan natin, yung inconvenience, may daling na galit, basta kahit na sa traffic, may nag-aaway na, kahit sa traffic, di ba? Dahil para sa atin, the less we suffer, the happier will be. Gusto natin kaligahayahan, kasaganahan ng buhay. yon ang gusto ng bawat isa at karamihan sa atin. Di ba? Ang kasaganahan. Pero alam nyo, iba ang sa mga santo. Bakit? Ang mga santo sa kanilang mga uh, sulat, sabi ni Padre Pio, it is precisely Suffering that strengthens us, humbles us, at ito'y may tawag, may ituring na uh, forgative suffering. Unang level ng suffering. At alam niyo ba mga kapatid, kung ang mga anghel ay capable of envy, magsisilo sila sa atin sa dalawang mga bagay na nasa atin na wala sa kanila. Una, ang Eucharist. Itong Eucharist. Pangalawa, ang suffering. Bakit? Tingnan nyo yung uh, Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. Meron tayong participation. Oh. Sa mga sa suffering ng ating Panginoong Hesus. So, ang mga santo nagturo sa atin na suffering is of such great merit 
that is greater than external works such as preaching, writing, or even working miracles. Imagine mga kapatid, ang suffering ay mas malaki pa ang merito daw kaysa nangangaral ka at gumagawa ng milagro. Pero parang nakalimutan ng karamihan ang doktrina at aral ng simbahang katoliko kaugnay sa suffering. The defining moment of redemption for humanity was not when our Lord tulad sa uh, Ebanghelyo ngayon. Pinagaling ang may sakit, binuhay ang uh, patay. Hindi nagsimula nung siya ay nangaral doon sa sinagoga. Ngunit ang kaligtasan ay nangyari. It was when Jesus was crucified and drained of His blood out of love for mankind. So we see then that, the, that there is no greater measure of our love than our willingness to follow in the footsteps of our Redeemer. So by doing so, we join in the redemptive work of Christ through our sufferings. Ibig sabihin, we become little co-redeemers and the merit, conversion, and sanctification of souls. Ano sabi ng mahal na Berhen Maria? Sabi niya, many souls go to hell because There is no one sacrifice themselves and free for them. At pakinggan natin si Father Jose Francisco Sikea sa kaniyang aral kaugnay sa suffering. Kung bakit kailangan natin itong yakapin at magiging meritorious if we are in the state of grace. Dahil sa buhay sa mundong ito, dalawa lamang ang pwedeng mangyari natin, mga kapatid. To suffer without Christ, yun ang napakapiligro. Suffer without Christ. Suffer without sanctifying grace. And to suffer with Christ. Kaya sa anima, Christy, suffer me not to be separated from you. Si Father Jose Francisco Siquea. I think that uh, many people don't realize. And now, a second point, why we carry our crosses and why we should carry it well is that we offer our sufferings for the love of Jesus Christ. So una, we suffer for the sake of the redemption of others. Pangalawa, We suffer in order to show our love for Jesus. Okay? And this is something also that is important. We can only know Jesus' love for us when we see the stark reality of what he did for us on the cross. Right? When I went to Rome to study uh, the ministry of exorcism, I, I was able to uh, go to a place where it, there were replicas of the passion of Jesus, the replica of the tools Uh, to bring about the passion of Jesus. Tapos nandun talaga yung mga uh, replica of the nails, napakalaki yung mga pako. And even the crown of thorns was not simply a, like a garland. It was really a, a ha, parang sombrero siya that will, and it, uh, that will fit the entire head. Okay? And uh, they toured, there was a short tour about, uh, uh, about the Shroud of Turin and I saw all of this. And, uh, I saw really how, how much the Lord truly suffered. And we know, we can understand why He sweated blood. Because of this physical torture. And we have to understand that Jesus was very hard to kill because He had the perfect body. Okay? We know that His body, 
came from Mama Mary, okay, uh, who was pure, freed from uh, any kind of stain of sin, and therefore his body was a perfect human body. And therefore, napakahirap patayin si Jesus. That's why if you look at The Passion of the Christ, the movie, Mel Gibson based it on the book from the visions of Blessed Anne Catherine Emmerich. And it was it is there that you read how hard it was to kill the Lord. And therefore, this Lord suffered much longer than any human being. And secondly, his suffering was not simply physical suffering. What made him really sweat blood was spiritual suffering. He experienced what we would experience if he did not die for us. He experienced the abandonment of the Father. And he experienced the full brunt of all the sins. And the, what we may say, uh, imagine God is infinitely pure, tapos kaharap niya, he's faced with even one little sin is a very big contradiction to an infinitely pure God. And imagine all the sins of the world were placed on his shoulders to carry and to explain. Okay? So this itself caused him so much spiritual anguish that he sweated blood. Wala naman tayong nababasa na uh, mga tao na kapag sila ay ipapako sa krus o ibibitag ay sila ay uh, pinapawis ang dugo. Okay? This is not normal. But with Jesus, why did he sweat blood? His sweat was blood. It was because, not simply because of the physical suffering, because no one really sweated blood because of physical suffering, but more of the spiritual suffering which was much, much worse. Precisely because the, the judgment that God would put on the human race because of sin and our continual sinning, iniligay lahat, the penalty was placed entirely on, on Jesus Christ. Okay? Spiritually, he felt that what it would mean to be abandoned by God. He felt the experience of being abandoned by the Father. And therefore, he experienced all of this so that we do not have to experience it anymore. And therefore, what is very important is that we suffer in order to be able to at least alleviate in a little way the suffering of Jesus, to say that, Lord, you are not alone. St. John Paul states that the early followers of Jesus had this in mind, that through their sufferings, in a certain sense, they repay the infinite price of the passion and death of Christ. And I would like to quote also St. Alphonsus de Ligurian, who say, states that a soul can give no surer mark to God of love for him than voluntarily to suffer to please him. This is the great proof which Jesus Christ has given of his love for us. And this is a proof that we ourselves love Jesus. Because it, it is easy, easy to say, praise the Lord when everything is fine. But to say, Lord, I love you and I trust in you when things are dark, that takes a lot of love. That brings us out, out of our comfort zone and draws out love from our hearts. Okay? And therefore, this is something that is pleasing in the eyes of God. This proves the love of God. That we love God. That's so why Sabi is St. Teresa of Avila, the great doctor of the church, Love is the measure of our ability to bear our crosses. Suffering is therefore like creating a gift for someone you love. Okay? For example, a, a, a mother, and yung anak niya may sakit, and she wants to do a lot of good things for, for him. He will not delegate it to someone else, no? as a nurse or as a caregiver, whatever. She would want to do it himself, herself, even though she will suffer a lot because of the inconvenience of being there, seeing the sick child, but she will want to do it. She will not relegate the work to someone else. She will do it because of love. She would want to show her child that she loves him. And that is also why we carry our crosses, to show Jesus that, yes, Lord, you love us through that suffering, and I know how much you suffered, and I want to repay it in my own very little way to show you that I appreciate you and I'm grateful and I love you. So although Jesus is now resurrected, he is now in heaven, and cannot anymore suffer physically, when he was at the Garden of Gethsemane, he experienced the burden of all sins, from the past to the future, because it, with God there is no time, okay? Hence, what we have done even today, and will still do already, affected Jesus in the past at the Garden of Gethsemane. That's why we have to understand, I mean, during the garden, God, Jesus himself saw all the sins that will be committed even in the future. And he also saw all the sufferings that will be offered to him because 
of love for him. He saw the sufferings that we will offer to him, the suffering that I will, offer, that I will for example, offer to him today. He saw it during the Garden, garden of Gethsemane. And that gave him some consolation. That alleviated in some way his suffering. That is why sabi ng isang author, Jesus may and does know now that he was relieved of suffering in the past and it is a joy of being able to afford this relief which took place long ago that is the incentive to acts of renunciation at the present day. Okay? That means Jesus, during his suffering in the, uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane and on the cross, knew already okay, what uh, knew and experienced consolation because of the sufferings I'm offering him today. Okay? It already affected him during that time. Another point is that we carry our crosses well in order to give glory to the Father. Okay? Now, this is very important also. As a painting, kapag may isang larawan na napakaganda, ito ay nagbibigay, nagbibigay, nagbibigay tangi sa gumawa ng larawan na yan, yung pintor. So, as a painting that perfectly gives glory to the, its painter, God is glorified when a Christian faces the crosses of life with faith, hope, and love. That means we become another Christ. We become uh, a masterpiece of Jesus, of God. We become like Jesus. And instead of the cross destroying us, it makes us holier. And therefore, the more God is glorified in us because His work, okay, His work is, is being fulfilled in us. And uh, today, we are called by God, especially now with this pandemic and a lot of people confused, suffering, and looking for God. We can now, at this very moment, become a witness to the glory of God. We can, we, many people are looking now for, for some form of security and light. We can now, at this moment, become light to the world and uh, beacons of light to the world and also we can also be salt of the earth during these times. Many people now are searching for God, okay? Because they have seen that they, with their own powers, they cannot resolve this issue. And therefore, they are now realizing that they are not God. And this is a great moment of grace, but we have to be there to point them to the right direction. That yes, by witnessing and uh, through teaching, preaching, and witnessing with, in our, with our lives, about uh, that in spite of all of this, we are beacons of love, of faith, of confidence, of calmness, okay, of hope. We become beacons and witnesses to the world that God exists, that there is a God, and that He is very much alive and is even until now working, and He works more, especially during the darkest of times. And we can witness now to many people of this reality. Now is the best opportunity to witness to this. Because man now is vulnerable and he's, he, like when a person is sick usually or dying, he becomes more open to what is transcendent. So ito ay isang paraan, right? a means by which we can really shine as witnesses of Jesus Christ. So let us, and also we must not forget not simply to assist them with our corporal works, but we must also pray for them. For many will be needing our prayers. And who are these people needing special our prayers today? Not those who we usually pray for. Yung mga tao na madalas natin pinagdadasal, yung ating mga loved ones, etc. But those who because of their past lives do not know God, or did care that He existed, or those who have a wrong conception of God. May mga, galit, may mga iba nga nagagalit sa Diyos, bakit eh, with all the prayers, hindi pa natatanggal yung itong virus na ito, bakit hindi pa tinatanggal ng Panginoon. No? Because the concept of God is a Santa Claus type of God. Okay? If you look at the life of Jesus, okay, He struggled to accept the cross, and the cross occurred in His life. Okay? But we see what occurred afterwards. So we pray for those not only we have a wrong conception of Him, but those who also are so self-absorbed due to their sufferings or because the crisis has made their self-centeredness into selfishness. Those with little or no faith 
before all of this occurred, will especially be struggling. They will be filled with fear because they have never developed a real faith life. Okay? Now, the important thing is they will need prayers. They will need to invite God to their lives, into their lives. But because they don't have the capacity or they lack the faith at this moment, we should fill in the gap and pray for them. We are the ones who should invite God that He enter into their lives. And therefore, praying for these people, especially those who don't know God or who have never taken Him seriously, okay, is much more relevant today than before. Because right now, okay, they, they can either go either way. We know that a lot of young people, when they experience problems, they commit suicide. Mas lalo ngayon, that they, we can be certain that frustration and depression will come in as this lockdown continues. And the more that those who have not bolstered their life with God, they have no relationship with God, will experience the most difficulties, the most confusion, the most, the most, uh, the, uh, the, the most depression, uh, the, the most uh, frustration. So God respects our freedom, and therefore we pray for these people. Okay, whether because of their faith is weak or they're filled with fear because they don't know who God is or they have a wrong concept of God, we as a church must fill in this gap and invite God for them into their lives. Just like in an exorcism ministry, when a person comes to us and nagwawala yung tao, he's possessed by the evil one, it is the faith of the exorcist and the people around who make up for the lack of faith. Just like a baptized child, because he cannot yet answer uh, the, profession, the profession of faith, is the parents who make up for that lack of capacity. And therefore, we today, many people, are in need of this type of intercession. This is a work of mercy. I remember this story in the United States about a person na nasa taas ng isang gusali. He went to work early, so siya lang iisa. I don't know, it was five floors or seven floors. But suddenly, when he opened the door, biglang may usok, may sudog na pala. So he went to his office, he looked down, it was filled with smoke, and the fire in the hallway was getting closer and closer and closer and closer, and he didn't know what to do. So what he did was he opened the window, he went to the ledge, and stood there waiting, uh, did not knowing what to do. And he kept on hearing voices sa baba. No? Through the smoke, he could hear people shouting, Tumalun ka na, tumalun ka na. Okay, jump, jump. But he didn't recognize these voices, so he didn't know what to do. He, 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 the flames were closing in on him, but before it reached him, he heard the voice of his father that said, Anak, it is all right, jump. Okay? This happened in the United States. So he jumped and he was caught by the firemen. Okay? They had a, a big, uh, some form of tarpaulin. So the miracle here is first and foremost, with so many people shouting, he recognized the voice of his father. And not only that, he trusted in the voice of his father. It is because we can be certain that this boy grew up with a deep, intimate relationship with his father, that the love relationship between the father and the son was constant in his life. And therefore, agad-agad narinig niya ang voices ng kanyang, na, 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 na discovery niya, no? among all the many voices, he was able to distinguish the voice of the father. And without any doubt whatsoever, when the father told him to jump, he jumped. He jumped. And therefore, he was saved. There was no doubt in his heart. And therefore, we can see what type of relationship he had with the father. A close, intimate, loving, trustful relationship. And this is something that we have to take into account because many people who are experiencing the fire will not be able to recognize the voice of the father because if you have not built up any relationship whatsoever during the times of crisis, the more you will not be able to hear his voice. Okay? You will not be able to recognize it. You will not ever be able to recognize the voice of God from the voice of the devil because you are not used to the voice of God. And secondly, if the Lord tells you to do something, you will not even trust that God is telling you to do something that will save you, okay? like jump. And therefore, this is, these are people whom we have now to pray for precisely because now they're discovering that they need okay, 
this, uh, this God, but they don't know how to bring it about. And we who have the Lord has trained for many years, we are called now to show them the way. Now, many people are distraught and confused because many people have been forced to stop their worldly lives and be with themselves. Okay, so it, with no more distractions, wala nang distractions, wala nang uh, lumalabas papuntang mall or you know, uh, gatherings, parties. This I'm sure is frightening to many since the inner demons and the vacuum within them that has always remained outside their consciousness because they are filled with workaholic sila or they are filled with so many things to do. Kunti nunti lalabas yan, it will be brought to consciousness. Adding to this is that the virus forces us to confront the reality that we are not gods, nor is money, nor science, nor any man in... Okay, ang talk na ito ni Father Sikia ay sinagawa nung kasagsagan ng pandemic. Kung maalala ninyo, meron ding isinagawang sunod-sunod na solemn exorcism sa pandemic. No? At napakahalaga talaga ang, ang suffering sa buhay ng tao. Eh, ituloy muna natin si Father Sikia. But we forget that the most important thing is are the spiritual works of mercy. Because the most important thing is to save the soul. And not only that, if they discover God in their lives, everything else will follow. Because I can continue giving a lot of things to, the, to someone who is in need. But unless he has connection with God, it will not be a blessing for him. Because if this, pag natapos na lang ang problema na ito, babalik ulit siya sa kanyang dating buhay. Okay, which is uh, a life of uh, poverty, okay? a life of uh, uh, being away from the Lord. So the most important thing is not only do we help corporally people, but we have to always to add a spiritual dimension. Ang tanong... Handa ka bang yayakap sa mga kasakitan sa buhay ito bilang pagsunod ng ating Panginoong Hesus? There are three types of sufferings, mga kapatid, sa aral ng simbahang katoliko. Una, tinatawag itong purgative sufferings. Purgative sufferings, na acts to purify and humbles our souls. Pwede yung suffering can be physical tulad sa kay Dr. Uh, Ong. Pwedeng emotional, humiliation, persecution. At pwede din yung tinatawag na spiritual dryness. Dryness in prayer. Pero kung ating pagsikapan din na i-fight yan, malaki ang meritorio sa ating buhay. So, purgative suffering is the first and the most necessary step towards union with our Lord. Because it helps divest from the soul, the old man, yung tinatawag na concupiscence. Pride, avarice, lust, and worldly attachment. Ipinakita mismo ng ating Panginoon no? ang buhay bilang mahihirap Dahil ito'y nagpaalala sa atin na lahat, bawat isa sa atin, huwag natin kalimutan, we're just passing through. We are just passing through and we are not entitled to own anything that is more than what we need today. We're just passing through. So, yeah, inaaniyahan tayo. No? lalo na sa mga worldly attachment. At kung matapos na itong purgative suffering, 
At kung maalala natin ang prayer ng Anima Christ, suffer me not to be separated from you, magiging itong unity of suffering. The purification enables the soul to be united with God, making it a image of himself to be as if a little Christ on earth. Yun ang binanggit ni Father Sikia. No? Nalala niyo kahit yung uh, pothaw. Kailangan dadaan sa apoy at i-form talaga. Mainit yan. Pokpokin para maporma talaga kung gawin man itong etak. At ang pangatlo ay tinatawag na redemptive suffering. Ano yung redemptive suffering? Redemptive suffering is the highest from a form of suffering because it is directed not inward towards the souls on sanctification but outward toward towards others ito ang suffering ng ating Panginoong Hesus at alam nyo ba kahit ano if we are in the state of grace any form of suffering no matter how small has the potential to take on a redemptive character. Kahit lagnat, kahit pa sakit ng ipin, St. Teresa says, that even a totek can be offered for the conversion of sinners. The more a soul has been tested and tried in the previous two kinds of sufferings, the more graces will its redemptive suffering merit. Kaya ngayon, mga kapatid, pwede natin i-evaluate sa ating buhay. Ano kaya? Yung ating paghihirap sa kasulukuyan. Naghihirap ba tayo sa kasakitan na daladala natin kasama ang Panginoong Hesus o naghihirap ba tayo na walang Panginoon? Tandaan natin ang panalangin. Suffer me not to be separated from you. Dalawa lamang ang pwedeng mangyari sa mundong ito. To suffer without Christ and to suffer with Christ. Kaya, Hilingin natin habang mam, uh, mamuhay tayo sa sanctifying grace na bigyan tayo ng grasya ng Diyos sa pagyakap sa kasakitan. No? Sa pagyakap sa kasakitan hanggang sa huling bahagi ng ating buhay para sa conversion, unbelievers, and poor sinners. Dito lamang To make his message known is our responsibility So here we are to pledge our lives to the